far from the metropolitan cities and isolated from New Delhi is Manipur. The northeastern state is home to around 3.3 million people. Half of them are Maitai people who follow Hinduism and Sanamaism, while around 43% are Kukis and Nagas who are Christians. Last year, Manipur met global headlines when ethnic violence erupted in the region. The state of Manipur in the northeast of India has been rocked by ethnic violence since May in a conflict marked by brutal murders and sexual crimes against women. We are not safe here. They attack anywhere, anytime. So we have to move to a better place so that we can live. President's rule. Without that, we have no option. Our children, our mothers, we are all displaced. So many of our villages and our places burn. We trust the central government. We are against the state government. Tens of thousands have fled their homes, and both sides have reported cases of sexual assaults. Many women are seeking refuge in camps with their children. It's a conflict that has not spared the most vulnerable. Women have been targeted brutally with several reported incidents. The fighting between these communities saw hundreds killed, thousands of homes destroyed and families displaced. Today, thousands of displaced families live in relief camps like this. This one is home to 750 people. Men, women and kids were forced to move here after their homes were burned down last year. Children uprooted from their homes and playgrounds now spend their days riding bikes around the muddy fields here. Families have been allocated rooms with mattresses on the floor and a small bench to store their most essential items. And the kitchen is just a massive bench outside the rooms where women often take turns to cook. 27 years old baby Moirangtem belongs to the Maitai community. She was a school teacher in Chorchanpur, a cookie populated area before the riots displaced her family. She now lives at this relief camp with her parents and younger brothers. A month ago, she finally found a job in Manipur's main city, Imphal, as a teaching staff member. It's not really a cup of tea living in a relief camp. And, but the thing is, we happen to adjust it. And we doesn't have any means rather than adjusting the situation. Such relief camps are spread across Imphal and its outskirts. A short distance away is the Akampat relief camp. The situation here is just as dire. Displaced women huddled together, working from their ramsackled kitchens and tents. Men forced out from their farming villages. And kids playing around the waterlogged compound. <laughs> Maitai woman Fayambam Ganthoibi was rescued by the army when her village was attacked. She has been living with her family at this relief camp since last May. I came with, here with one daughter when she was only four months old and she was feeding by bottle. She was bottle feeding baby so um, it was very hard for me to buy um, milk, lactose and yes. Uh, now uh, here, uh, they supply some, but it cannot be um, sufficient for her. For decades, there has been a deep-seated mistrust among the Maitai, Kuki and Naga communities in Manipur, predominantly revolving around disputes over land and influence. The latest spread of violence was triggered by a High Court judgment in May last year when it ordered the state government to give the Maitai community an official tribal status. Cookies protested against this judgment, leading to the fighting. The violence had ramifications for New Delhi as Prime Minister Narendra Modi faced a no-confidence motion brought by the opposition. Speaker Sir, in the name of Manipur, Hindustan ki hatiya ki hai. The government dismissed the motion as a headline-grabbing gimmick and after a walkout by the opposition, the no-confidence motion was easily defeated. Manipur is also awash with weapons. Several rebel groups on all sides are heavily armed. Most of these weapons have been stolen from the local police stations. 
The fight is over resources and ethnicity rather than religion. The conflict between the two groups has been going on for decades, and it is a complex, multi-layered issue. An issue that the BJP ruled state government has been accused of mishandling. Last year, BJP state legislature wrote to the Prime Minister office stating there was a complete breakdown of law and order in Manipur. I met with Yambem Lava, the ex-chairman of Manipur Human Rights Commission, who has been outspoken about the ongoing crisis. Now, since the 3rd of May, some 200 plus people have been killed, some 60,000 people have been rendered homeless, 8-9,000 houses have been burnt, and the government has not been able to do anything except providing them with a token relief of some makeshift houses for the sake of publicity. Voters here will be casting their ballots on April 19 and 26. The state has two seats in Indian Parliament, currently held by the BJP and the ally, the Naga People's Front. Despite the criticism, the BJP is confident of returning power here. The Election Commission has arranged voting facilities for the displaced communities at the relief camp. But when asked about how they will vote, many say it's the last thing on their mind. Because I lost all my faith in vote. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have lost all my faith. Our minds are engaged with, do, with all this uh, conflict stuff and what to do for the future and all these things. Our minds are not free at all times. Truly speaking, we don't trust anyone. Leaders also, now, because they don't do nothing for us at all.